But what are your reasons for not wanting to believe in man-made climate change? We all know the, the, the planet changes and the climate changes. We can look at history to show us that. But the man-made component of this, I suppose, is what's really of interest. Let's speak to Dr... Benny Pizer. Uh, Dr. Pizer is from the think tank called the Global Warming Policy Foundation. Dr. Pizer, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so when you read a report such as this from uh, the UN, and I, something within me tells me I've sort of read this report about a dozen times over the last few years, <laughs> is, there, is there anything different about this one? Uh, no, not really, other than the uh, usual um, hype. Um, there isn't really anything new, although there should have been. Okay. Because in the past, if you look back, uh, this is the fifth report by the IPCC. In the past, uh, they made specific predictions. They said uh, because of CO2 emissions, the world expects a warming by 0.2 degree every decade. That's a very specific uh, prediction uh, they made uh, in the last 20 years. Now, over the last 15 years, we all know that uh, global temperatures have come to a, 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 you know, have plateaued, essentially. They've risen mm -hmm. in the 1980s and the 1990s, and then they suddenly stopped rising. And uh, no one knows how long this uh, is going to last. No one knows uh, when it's going to start again. And if it starts again, how much uh, warming we will see. So that really important aspect has been largely ignored because that is good news. The, the, the good news is that regardless of whether you accept the full uh, theory or not, the fact that it's not warming as much as was predicted mm. uh, certainly has given us more time to think hard about what to do. So you, you, you believe this to be significant because I'm, I'm sure they would say, well, actually, if you look back, at, you know, in 50 years time, when we look back, these few years of not warming will just be seen as a little blip within the bigger picture. Yes, they would say that, wouldn't they? But they didn't come, uh, see it coming. They predicted that we would see much, much faster and stronger warming. So something is wrong with the models on which they base their predictions because they made false predictions. And, you know, Personally, I prefer to rely on what I see outside my window rather than the models that can come up with all sorts of scary scenarios. So why, I mean, to, to be a little conspiratorial about yes. this, why, why would they say this uh, and continue to hammer home this point ah. if you think there are question marks over it? What would be their reason for that? Uh, well, I don't think uh, it's a uh, conspiracy. Uh, I really think that uh, it's more... Uh, hubris in that uh, many climate scientists actually believe they understand the climate. They really think that they have fully grasped the main factors that is driving the climate. And that's where I remain more skeptic. I don't think we fully understand the climate. It's highly complex. There are so many millions of factors that have an, you know, an influence, including ourselves, obviously, with our CO2 emissions. But we don't really fully understand how the oceans work, how the sun works, and how uh, all sorts of vegetation uh, and, and, and ocean cycles and seasonal changes um, affect climate change. And if you don't fully understand it, then your models might overemphasize the human contribution. But there are hundreds, if not thousands, of scientists who are subscribing to this view. Your, your, your view would be seen scientifically as a minority view, would it not? Uh, yes, in, in, in many ways, it, I, I guess that's right. However, I would also say that a growing number of scientists are beginning to acknowledge that the effect of CO2 might not be as disastrous or as dramatic as initially uh, was thought. I mean, you have to remember over the last 20 years, or so 25% uh, of all CO2 emissions that were ever, ever emitted by humans have gone into the atmosphere. And at the same time, uh, the temperatures haven't really risen. So there's a disconnect between what the CO2 we are pumping ever more 
levels of CO2 in the atmosphere and the effect uh, isn't as dramatic as predicted. So there's, there's a discrepancy. But wh- why are the UN, or the, the, this particular panel within the UN on climate change, why are they saying that global emissions must fall by at least 40% by 2050? So this is only in the next 36 years. Yes. Uh, or we face issues such as famine, drought, starvation. I mean, these are very, very severe warnings. They're quite clear about this. Yes, unfortunately, uh, they are, in my view, exaggerating. And uh, I think they're also desperate because they realize that the international community has failed over the last 25 years to come to any uh, binding agreement. And there's no chance of a binding agreement. And there's simply no chance of cutting CO2 to the level they think is uh, is, uh, demanded because energy demand in China, in India, in the developing world is going to double in the next 20, 30 years. So instead of using less fossil fuel, they will actually be using more. And so there is, again, this disconnect between the reality on Mm. the ground and what the models predict might happen. So you think some of those cuts in emissions have been just very minor? I mean, the the hole in the ozone still remains the size of North America. So it's not reducing despite cuts in some emissions, but you're saying that in other growing economies, and you you mentioned China, India, places like that, it's going to get worse and outbalance any work that perhaps Western countries have tried to do. Well, there has been no uh, drop in CO2 emissions or cuts. Uh, CO2 emissions are going up quite steadily. Why, uh, why, can you explain why that is, Benny? Because we, we, have, we have a perception that it's going down and we're told to drive cleaner cars, we're told to use different kinds of heating for our homes and government buildings turn lights off where they never <laughs> used to. All of this kind of stuff is going on on a daily basis and yet it's made no discernible difference. No, it hasn't. And, and the, the, the reason is quite simple, actually. All alternatives to conventional power generation, that is gas and oil and coal, which basically powers our planet. All alternatives are more expensive, either double or treble or quadruple as expensive as the cheap. So that is the the dilemma in a way. The dilemma is that our planet, our civilization is powered by cheap energy, which is fossil fuel based. Mm -hmm. That generates all the CO2. If we want to get Away from that, we have to use more expensive energies like solar and wind or nuclear. They're all still more expensive and controversial in in their own right. And because of that, um, the world still remains uh, and will remain in the foreseeable future using cheap energy. Does it matter? Does does it matter if we... I mean, we are told clearly by climate change, uh, the, the climate change panel, that it really does matter. Is yeah. there an argument that says actually uh, science and nature are are very curious and incredibly intelligent in the way they function, and it, w- whatever damage we think we are doing will be countered by some other phenomena that we may have yet to even discovered? We don't know. I mean, I don't claim I know what's going to happen in the next one hundred years. All I uh, acknowledge is that it's not warming as fast as we we were told in the past which is good news because it means we might have much more time to think hard about uh, realistic and cost-effective solutions and the second thing is as long as alternative energies to conventional fossil fuel based energies remain more expensive they will not solve the problem because let's face it in europe Many governments, and in Britain in particular, have started to move towards renewables. It makes energy bills go up, families struggle, uh, industries become less competitive, whereas the rest of the world does business as usual. So we are paying a price for you know, going green and, mm. and becoming more expensive and less competitive, whereas the others are using okay. the cheap stuff. Benny, stay with us for one second. Let me just bring in Nick in Swellcliffe, who wants to make a point on this. Good morning to you, Nick. Oh, good morning. Morning, okay. sir. What are your thoughts? Well, um, I, I, sorry, I don't know the guy's name he's on there, but what a level-headed Benny. fellow... Sorry, Benny, yeah. What a level-headed fellow he seems to be. Um, uh, No-one's explained to me, or to us, shall we say, about in the early Middle Ages... Britain was so warm 
we were growing subtropical fruits in East Anglia, and I think also we were growing grapes in the West Country, exporting them to Europe. It was so warm. And then, after that, we had a period at the, before the Victorian era when it was so cold, dreadfully cold for such a long period of time, that the Thames used to freeze up so much so they could have bullock races or ox roasts sure. and things on the Thames. So your, your now, point is that climate has always changed so And we're talking about in the context of, say, maybe, I don't know, three, four, maybe 500 years, which is a, a, not even a next breath in times of sure. the Earth's uh, cycle... So how how can that happen in such a short space of time? Well, let's ask Dr. Penny, uh, Dr. Benny Pisa on this. Yeah. Uh, Benny, w- what are your thoughts on that? It's a, well, reason- it a reasonable very... point that Nick makes. It's, it's oh, one that lots of people ask. A- absolutely. It's a very important point. Um, and, and climate skeptics have always pointed out that uh, the warming period, uh, uh, we are obviously in a warming period, but that started when we came out of this little ice age. And obviously, when you get out of a little ice age, uh, you would expect to warm. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. The problem is that some of the clim- climate scientists claim that this is a purely northern hemisphere thing, that it wasn't a global uh, event the the little ice age or the uh, the middle uh, medieval warm period that it was just a, okay. a, a northern but the reality is it's much more important than that we don't really know exactly uh, what the temperatures were a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago or three thousand years ago or five hundred years ago because obviously our rec- there were no uh, record takers so because we don't fully understand the past. We don't even know whether today is exceptional or something that ha- happened frequently. How, un- how untapped do you think this area is then? How? Untapped. How, how, how much more is there, do you think, to learn that even climate change scientists have yet to learn? What, oh, what, what, uh, what, what percentage have we tapped into so far? Uh, to understand the past, the, the well, to understand where we're, we're likely to be going. I mean, you said at the beginning that you know we know s- little or we don't know enough about oceans yeah. and what happens with plants and vegetation and uh, and the like. How far do you think we've got to go on that journey? I think we haven't even fully grasped perhaps sixty seventy percent of the full picture. I think for a start, we don't even know. The influence of the sun. We have no idea whether the sun has a stronger or weaker or moderate influence. I mean, you would expect the sun to have quite a substantial <laughs> influence on global temperatures, but we don't fully understand the sun. We don't know exactly how it works. We don't know when it is active and when it is inactive with the sunspots, uh, whether there are other extraterrestrial influence like cosmic rays. There are so many things we don't know. So, I I wouldn't like even to put a figure uh, on it, but I'm pretty sure we are far, far away from understanding climate. just Just a very final point, Benny, if you would. There will be lots of scientists who may be listening to this, certainly the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, thinking, what is Dr. Pizer speaking about here? We've done the research, we've got the data, we're right, he's wrong. How would you respond to that? Well, obviously, they would say that. Uh, I would only argue that they are too overconfident about what they uh, predict. Uh, Their past predictions uh, have a poor record, and therefore, uh, I would say, let's take them with a pinch of salt. Okay, Dr. Benny Pizor, thank you, sir. Uh, The Global Warming Policy Foundation is where Benny is from. Uh, That is a think tank. He's open-minded on the uh, science of global warming, but deeply concerned about costs and other implications and many of the policies currently being advocated. Of course, it is worth stressing again that the majority of scientific opinion is not really on his side, uh, but comes out very much in harmony with that UN panel on climate change. Your thoughts as to why you are cynical, sceptical about man-made climate change, which is what we're speaking about here.